Thank you for joining me here today. My name is Cree with NARC Free. I'd love it if you hit the subscribe button. So today I'm going to be talking to you about narcissists and their manufactured dysfunction. So those of you who are truly dealing with a narcissist, not someone with narcissistic tendencies, but I mean someone who has narcissistic personality disorder, they're high on the spectrum for narcissism. These people will create their own dysfunction if they are not getting enough attention from you or if they have been getting supply at their job. And by the way, supply is not just uh, people that they are sleeping with. Supply is people in general who pay them attention or give them compliments, who fuel them and who gas them up and who um, are magnifying their false self. Okay, so anyone who is willing to do that is considered uh, supply. All right. So if the narcissist is not getting enough supply, then they need to create some type of um, friction or something within the dynamics of the relationship to be able to get uh, get off or get their fix of <laughs> fuel. And um, so what they do is they like to create a chaotic environment. And the reason for this is because this is what they are familiar with. In their childhood, there was chaos. There was yelling and discontentment and underhanded things going on in their home, constant confusion. And when the narcissist doesn't have confusion going on around them, and they have peace, they really don't know what to do with it. Some of you are dealing with a covert narcissist. So you think that they're okay. You may not even know it. If they're covert and they're a malignant, you may not even know you were with a narcissist until you are out of it. I'm going to give you some examples of what this looks like. You may have had some red flags along the way, but not enough things happened back to back for you to put it all together. There were time spans in between there, so you didn't really figure out what was going on. So whenever you're peaceful, and you're at peace and you know how to get to your happy place. Narcissists don't know how to do that. So what they'll do is they will do things like this. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. So say, for instance, you've married a narcissist and right after you get married, um, you start getting, you know, messages or the narcissist is getting messages on their phone from one of their supplies saying, you know, happy new year to you. And um, there's messages on there saying, oh, congratulations on you getting married. There's another message saying, oh, you got a new house. Congratulations on that. You're doing well. Oh, you got a new car. So from the messages that you're seeing, you can, you're, you're thinking to yourself, this is very confusing because you're only seeing messages from the supply, okay? And the narcissist is coming to you, showing you these messages, all right? So you didn't just ha hazardly find these messages. The narcissist actually showed them to you. And when you're dealing with a covert narcissist, they do everything out in plain sight. But if you're asleep, you're just not privy to the fact that it's happening because you haven't awakened fully to see what they're doing to you. So after you read these messages and you think to yourself, hey, this doesn't make any sense. It looks like this person is talking to themselves. But now you think back a couple of months later, or I'm sorry, a couple of months earlier, the narcissist told you that you can't delete messages from your iPhone. OK, so they already have manipulated you and lied to you about the way the iPhone works.
So they know when you see these messages that you're looking at them from the perspective of that they couldn't have been talking to this person because you can't delete messages from the iPhone. So this is, you know, kind of a form of gaslighting, too, because they've already manipulated you earlier. So when they present this to you, they know exactly how you're going to see it and they have manufactured it that way. All right. So you see the messages from um, the supply. You see no messages from the narcissist. The reason you don't see it is because they've gone in and deleted all their messages. Now, when you're out far enough from this, you realize that they are probably the one who actually reached out to the supply because they needed attention. Of course, in your sane mind, you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm going to reach out to this person and tell them, you know, you need to not be contacting um, my spouse. Thank you for checking on them and wishing them a happy new year. However, now they're married and you have no further need to um, reach out to them. And the supply is going to tell you the truth that um, you might get a message back saying that you are irrelevant and they are going to continue doing what they have been doing because the narcissist and the supply know what is happening. Uh, the supply may not realize that um, that, you know, they're deleting messages, but the supply knows their position. They know their spot. They've been with the narcissist for years. So they know who you are. You're just a fill in for a certain amount of time and the narcissist is not cutting them off. And they know this. Okay. This is manufactured, um, dysfunction and manipulation. Okay. Another way that this might happen is take, for instance, there's a family member or a friend and the narcissist wants to isolate you. All right. Maybe you've moved to another state and you've started making friends. And so the narcissist will say to you and keep keep in mind when I say this, they know that, you know, they've studied you. And they know how you respond to things and they've studied this other person. And so now they're going to pit you together. They're going to say to you, look, I have a problem with this person and I don't really know how to say it to them. But because you all are um, good friends, could you please, you know, talk to them about this for me? And they know full well that when you go to talk to the person, that the person is going to think it's you, not the narcissist. They're going to say to you, hey. Um, the narcissist is grown. Well, obviously they don't know they're a narcissist and the narcissist knows this also. They know that this person is not awakened to their schemes. So they know that this is going to pit you and the other person together because you're like, no, the narcissist really asked me to come and talk to you. And the person's like, they're grown. If that's what they wanted, they could have talked to me themselves. And so now they have caused confusion within the relationship of you and this other person. Another example of this would be um, creating a false, um, I'm sorry, a fake Facebook page and then sending you a message on it with some outlandish story about the narcissist. But the thing is, is that the narcissist is the one who created that Facebook page and the narcissist is really the one who's sending you the message. OK, so maybe the message goes something like this. Um, you know, I have a child with your husband. OK, such and such. And, you know, I'm not asking for anything from them. I can take care of my own child. And um, this is the child's name. And so they give you the first name. And that first name is your narcissist middle name. All right. So you know from this message that the narcissist does know this person, okay? That's what you're thinking in your mind. And you're wondering if they really do have a child. The narcissist say, no, they don't have any children. And the narcissist is saying they don't know the person who's sending this message, okay? Now, let's back up. You would never in a million years think that the narcissist is the person who set up this whole thing and orchestrated it, but they did. And why did they do it? 
They did it to get attention. They did it to muddy the waters so that you can start thinking that somebody wants them or somebody is thinking about them or somebody's popping back up into their life when really that somebody is the narcissist. When you are dealing with a real narcissist or sociopath or psychopath, these are the kind of things that will happen that you won't be able to see until you get out of the situation and you look back and you realize that the wording used in the message was wording, some of it was wording the narcissist would have used. Then you start thinking about that and you start thinking, why would somebody reach out when they don't want anything? The person says, well, I don't want them to take care of my child. I don't need them to shower food down on us. You know, things that, you know, don't even make any sense. Why would, why are you reaching out then? Okay, if you don't want them to to if you don't want anything, why are you reaching out? These are the kind of things that these are just three examples, okay, of things that they do. And this is kind of like um a, a wake up call for you to understand what you're dealing with, but so many people are so asleep that they don't know what they're dealing with until it's already too late. Keep in mind that narcissists are bottom feeders, okay? You know, when when crap goes down to the bottom of the water and there's, you know, waste that's down there on the bottom, narcissists are down there on the bottom, okay? They're eating off that waste. And so if you eat crap, then you turn into crap, all right? And the narcissist is so low down there that they're always trying to find a way, however covertly it is that they do it, to reach up and pull you down there with them and get you into dysfunction and get you into chaos with them so that you can be on their level equal to them. They just can't have you walking around and all this peace and happiness and joy. I recommend you guys listening to the series that I did on fuel using HG Tudor's book um, title, entitled Fuel because this better explains how when you are happy, the narcissist is sad. They, they don't want to see you happy. I don't care what you think. If you're truly with a narcissist, Everything that they're showing you is just an illusion. They really hate you and they really hate to see you happy. And it renders them sad when you are happy. So they have to cause confusion. They have to try to isolate you. They have to do the opposite of what you like, no matter how covertly they're doing it. Whenever you're feeling that feeling in your gut, like something's not right and things are off, it's because things are off and things are not right, okay? And you just don't know what to do with it because you're in a fog and you're still pretty much asleep. The narcissist is not your friend. They are your enemy, okay? And these are the kinds of things, the examples I gave you are just some of the ways that they will manufacture confusion or they will go to work and they'll come home and they'll tell you a story about how somebody at work didn't want to help them. You know, the person um, was supposed to tell them the area they were supposed to be working in and supposed to show them where they were supposed to be in this big building, but they wouldn't take them to where they were supposed to be. They tried to get away from them and they'll come up with this story and most likely The narcissist wanted to be with that person and wanted them as a supply. And the person knew they were a narcissist and was trying to get away from them. So the narcissist comes home with this story and gets you all up in arms. And you're thinking, oh, my God, where are they treating you like that at work? You know, why would somebody do that? Listen, whenever there is confusion going on, confusion is associated with darkness. Okay, peace is associated with being in the light. Whenever there is confusion, know that there is darkness nearby, all right? So whenever you're feeling off around someone, don't question um, don't question what it is. If you're feeling off, there's a reason why you're feeling off, okay? Step back and take some time to look at things, to see things um, in a different way, maybe in a way that you haven't looked at them. 
before. All right. So that you can see that maybe there's some issues here. Maybe maybe this off feeling that you're getting is your intuition telling you that something is off and that maybe you just need to look at it a little bit differently. OK, I hope that this has helped someone um, to see that narcissists do create calculated chaos. They are easily bored and they use manipulation and all types of tricks and schemes to create dysfunction so that they can feel good. This makes them feel like they are in control of situations and the outcome of things. And this is what narcissism is about. It is about power and control. That is what it is based on. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and give this a thumbs up. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you and bye-bye, my beautiful NARC-free family.